Greetings, Celestial Seekers. Today, we're diving deep into one of the most mysterious and controversial texts ever written, the Book of Enoch. This is where ancient stories of angels, giants, and forbidden knowledge begin. Some of these tales, though barely mentioned in the Bible, unfold in this hidden book with astonishing detail. Why was the Book of Enoch banned? What secrets were considered too dangerous for us to know? Let's unravel these mysteries together, exploring what this ancient text reveals about our past, and perhaps, our future. Join me as we embark on this incredible journey through one of history's most forbidden stories. The Watchers, Fallen Angels and Their Forbidden Knowledge The Book of Enoch introduces us to a group of angels known as the Watchers. These 200 angels were originally sent to observe humanity, but their leader, Shemihaza, had other plans. As they watched the lives of humans unfold, they became fascinated by the beauty of human women. Against the divine order, the Watchers made a pact to take human wives, vowing to face the consequences together. Their actions led to the birth of the Nephilim, a race of giants with extraordinary power and size. But the sin of the Watchers went even deeper. These angels, once loyal to God, shared forbidden knowledge with humans. They taught people secrets that were never meant to be known, things like how to create weapons of war, the art of makeup to alter appearance, astrology, and even magic. What was once an innocent world quickly became corrupted. Violence spread, greed grew, and humanity became further distanced from the divine. The Watcher's teachings might have seemed like gifts at first, but they were actually the beginning of the world's downfall. Think about it, could it be that ancient knowledge, things like metallurgy and astrology, didn't come from human invention, but from beings not of this earth? How do these stories align with what we know about the rapid development of early civilizations? This act of rebellion wasn't just about love or curiosity, it was about defying the divine plan. The earth was now tainted with forbidden knowledge, and chaos ruled. As we move forward, we'll see how the Watcher's betrayal set off a chain of events that would lead to their own destruction, and the flood that nearly wiped out humanity. What do you think? Could the Watchers be responsible for some of the ancient world's mysteries? Let's talk about it in the comments, and share your thoughts. The Nephilim, giants that once walked the earth. The Nephilim were the children of the Watchers and human women, and their arrival on earth was nothing short of catastrophic. These giants were not just taller or stronger than humans, they were beings of immense power who wreaked havoc wherever they went. According to the Book of Enoch, the Nephilim grew so large that they consumed everything in sight, including animals, plants, and eventually, even people. Their hunger and violent nature made them a terror to all of humanity. But their size and strength weren't their only disturbing traits. The Nephilim were a constant reminder of the rebellion of the Watchers, a living symbol of the corruption that had spread across the world. Their very existence was an abomination, mixing the divine with the mortal in a way that disrupted the natural order. As they dominated the earth, the Nephilim plunged the world into chaos. Their presence led to an era of unprecedented destruction. It's said that they were responsible for much of the violence that plagued ancient civilizations, leaving humans fearful and helpless. Their sheer power made them nearly unstoppable, and their actions added to the growing corruption on earth. The Bible briefly mentions the Nephilim, but it's the Book of Enoch that gives us a more detailed picture of their lives and their impact on humanity. These giants weren't just mythological beings, they were part of the reason the world became so broken that God had to step in and do something drastic. Do you think the stories of the Nephilim could be linked to the legends of giants found in different cultures around the world? Could these beings have been the inspiration for myths and tales passed down through generations? Their legacy may be hidden in the distant past, but the chaos they caused remains a powerful reminder of what happens when divine beings interfere with human life. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments, do you believe these giants really existed, or are they just ancient stories? Let's discuss it together. Divine Judgment, The Flood and the Fall of the Watchers As the corruption on earth grew because of the Watchers and their offspring, the Nephilim, it became clear that something had to be done. The world was falling into chaos, violence was everywhere, and humanity had lost its way. According to the Book of Enoch, God could no longer ignore the devastation caused by the actions of the Watchers. It was time for judgment. God sent his most powerful angels, Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, and Ariel, to carry out his orders. Each of them had a specific task. Michael was told to bind Shemihaza, the leader of the Watchers, and imprison him and his followers deep in the earth, in a place of darkness. They would remain there, trapped, until the final judgment at the end of time. Their rebellion would not go unpunished, but for now, they were to be cast away, unable to influence the world any longer. Meanwhile, Gabriel was given the task of destroying the Nephilim. These giants had caused too much destruction and had led humanity astray. The world needed to be cleansed of their influence. 
But it wasn't just about wiping them out, the entire world had become so corrupted that it needed a fresh start. This is where the flood comes in. In the Bible, the flood is seen as a punishment for human wickedness, but in the Book of Enoch, it's also a way to rid the earth of the consequences of the Watcher's sins. The flood wasn't just about saving Noah and his family, it was about erasing the chaos the Nephilim had caused and restoring order to creation. Noah, however, plays an important role in both stories. The Book of Enoch tells us that Noah was chosen by God not only because he was righteous, but because he had remained pure, untouched by the corruption of the fallen angels. Through Noah, humanity would be given a second chance. Do you think the story of the flood has deeper layers than what we've traditionally been told? Could it be more than just a tale of human sin, but also a story of divine intervention to stop the chaos unleashed by supernatural forces? Let's talk about what this might mean for our understanding of ancient history. Share your thoughts in the comments, and let's explore this mystery together. Enoch's Celestial Journey, Visions of Heaven and the Future The Book of Enoch takes a fascinating turn when Enoch himself is taken on a journey through the heavens. Unlike any human before him, Enoch was shown the hidden mysteries of the universe, guided by angels who revealed the workings of creation and the divine order that governs all things. This was no ordinary vision, Enoch was granted access to realms that were far beyond human comprehension, places where time and space worked differently, and where the fates of both angels and men were decided. One of the most remarkable parts of Enoch's celestial journey is his encounter with the heavenly bodies. He was shown the movements of the stars, planets, and the sun and moon, learning that these celestial objects were not just random lights in the sky. According to the Book of Enoch, these heavenly bodies were part of a grand design, following a divine order that had been established since the beginning of time. Enoch learned how they moved in perfect harmony, guided by angelic beings, and how their movements were connected to the seasons and the fate of the earth. This knowledge was meant to be hidden from humanity, but the fallen angels had already revealed some of these secrets, leading to the corruption of mankind. Enoch's journey helped him understand the balance between the natural and the supernatural, and how tampering with this balance could bring chaos to the world. Could it be that ancient civilizations, with their advanced knowledge of astronomy, were somehow tapping into this forbidden knowledge? But Enoch's visions didn't stop with the stars. He was also shown the future of humanity, the coming judgment and the fate of both the righteous and the wicked. Enoch saw the day when God would judge the fallen angels for their rebellion, and when those who followed the path of righteousness would be rewarded with eternal life. The imagery in these visions is powerful, with Enoch witnessing scenes of angels carrying out divine justice and the earth being restored to its original purity. These apocalyptic visions also reveal how the earth would be cleansed of its corruption, making way for a new era of peace and harmony. Enoch's role in all of this is not just as a witness but as a messenger. He was instructed to share these visions with the world so that people would understand the importance of living in accordance with divine laws and be prepared for the final judgment. Do you think Enoch's journey through the heavens could be an early description of what we now call apocalyptic literature? Could his visions of the future have influenced later books like Revelation? And what about the connection between the stars and divine beings, does this explain why ancient cultures placed so much importance on the movements of the heavens? Let me know what you think in the comments, and let's explore these questions together. Enoch's Celestial Journey, Visions of Heaven and the Future The Book of Enoch takes a fascinating turn when Enoch himself is taken on a journey through the heavens. Unlike any human before him, Enoch was shown the hidden mysteries of the universe, guided by angels who revealed the workings of creation and the divine order that governs all things. This was no ordinary vision, Enoch was granted access to realms that were far beyond human comprehension, places where time and space worked differently, and where the fates of both angels and men were decided. One of the most remarkable parts of Enoch's celestial journey is his encounter with the heavenly bodies. He was shown the movements of the stars, planets, and the sun and moon, learning that these celestial objects were not just random lights in the sky. According to the Book of Enoch, these heavenly bodies were part of a grand design, following a divine order that had been established since the beginning of time. Enoch learned how they moved in perfect harmony, guided by angelic beings, and how their movements were connected to the seasons and the fate of the earth. This knowledge was meant to be hidden from humanity, but the fallen angels had already revealed some of these secrets, leading to the corruption of mankind. Enoch's journey helped him understand the balance between the natural and the supernatural, and how tampering with this balance could bring chaos to the world. Could it be that ancient civilizations, with their advanced knowledge of astronomy, were somehow tapping into this forbidden knowledge? But Enoch's visions didn't stop with the stars. He was also shown the future of humanity, the coming judgment and the fate of both the righteous and the wicked. Enoch saw the day when God would judge the fallen angels for their rebellion, and when those who followed the path of righteousness would be rewarded with eternal life. 
The imagery in these visions is powerful, with Enoch witnessing scenes of angels carrying out divine justice and the earth being restored to its original purity. These apocalyptic visions also reveal how the earth would be cleansed of its corruption, making way for a new era of peace and harmony. Enoch's role in all of this is not just as a witness but as a messenger. He was instructed to share these visions with the world so that people would understand the importance of living in accordance with divine laws and be prepared for the final judgment. Do you think Enoch's journey through the heavens could be an early description of what we now call apocalyptic literature? Could his visions of the future have influenced later books like Revelation? And what about the connection between the stars and divine beings, does this explain why ancient cultures placed so much importance on the movements of the heavens? Let me know what you think in the comments, and let's explore these questions together.